With today's technology, roughly half of the tasks that people do can be automated. I mean, that's a staggering figure. But as interesting, and maybe even more important, is that only 5% of jobs can be entirely automated. So what it means is that increasingly, all jobs are going to be affected, that the way we work and what we do is going to shift over time as machines um, and you know, machine learning and artificial intelligence start to take over some pieces of what we do. Um, and that will require people to adapt and change and jobs, occupations as we know them today will shift. I think that there are two main dimensions to how technology is changing work. One is that a lot of what humans used to do are increasingly being done by machines, robots, cognitive machines, simple software on your computer. The other side of it is digital technology is changing how we organize work. It's taking us from full-time employment, which was the um, you know, predominant way of earning a living in the 20th century, towards a wide variety of non-employment work arrangements. And so what's exciting and scary at this point is the confluence of these two forces. So it's clear from our research, uh, but also just looking at history, that people increasingly, over time, will have to be complements to the work that machines do, work side by side or work, work with uh, machines. Well, we've certainly seen this in history uh, in all kinds of places, everywhere from the farm where we now have uh, you know, gigantic machines which uh, help harvest and, and, and sow crops, um, to being in an office environment where there's, there's work that previously we would do by hand or do by calculator and you know, now software helps us do, whether it's spreadsheets or word processors or you know, even more sophisticated anal analytic, uh, analytics. Going forward, we're going to see more of these technologies which involve robotics or artificial intelligence, again, working side by side with human beings. So even if you're on a, a shop floor or a factory floor, um, we're seeing these robots, which it's now safe to work side by side with human beings, whereas traditional industrial robots are confined to cages because they're incredibly dangerous machines. And now we're finding machines which uh, can safely work with human beings. What I think it will mean in practice is, first of all, that many jobs will change dramatically and that some of the tasks that we currently do today we'll be able to do in a much richer um, way because we have the benefit of automated support, much more insightful data analysis, real time, etc. Um, and it will mean that, uh, in some cases, that the job designs itself will completely change and new jobs will be created uh, to uh, actually leverage all of the new technology opportunities that we have. Well, you know, I, in general, I tend to be optimistic about human creativity and ingenuity, but I think this time around, we're facing some really severe challenges, right? People have made the case that we've been worried about this, you know, previously, and, you know, we needn't have worried because, um, uh, you know, new technologies have created new opportunities for human beings. But I worry that uh, this time might, in fact, be different because, you know, we really haven't had intelligent machines in the past that we could trust with making decisions, right? That was in the domain of human beings, right? Machines assisted us, they helped us. Uh, but it's different this time and it's going to be very challenging. You know, this is not the first industrial revolution, that's why we call it the fourth. And historically what we've seen is, yes, technology changes uh, are destroying some jobs, but net-net, historically, they have created more opportunities, more jobs than they have destroyed. So usually there's a short uh, transition period which can be very difficult for some people and that's why we built a safety net to allow people time to transition or if they can transition, give them a uh, place to um, you know, retire. And it seems like this transition is not going to be fundamentally different from the others. I think robotics and automation as well as supply chain management has already transformed the workplace. I think that every year less and less people work in jobs and more and more people work in gigs. That trend is irreversible. It just happens that automation, the rise of apps and so on is speeding it up today, but it was inevitable uh, that, that, the old, that the jobs model was going to collapse.
No longer do bank tellers hand out cash to customers because there are automated teller machines. There's one example. But have bank teller employment gone down? No, not in the United States. There are as many and in fact more bank tellers as there were uh, when the ATM machine was first introduced in the 1990s. Uh, but they do very different things. They're involved in selling customers other types of financial products, and they're doing what we call high, higher value added services. We have no idea what the future of work really looks like, and uh, th there are some threads we understand, um, but we really won't know. So the most important thing for us to do is to build a system which allows us to be immediately responsive to changes that exist in the workforce. I think one thing that we should be worried about is whether or not, in fact, we can adopt automation quickly enough. Because what we know is, because of demographics, because of aging, we simply don't have enough workers, won't have enough workers going forward to have the type of economic growth that we want, to be able to continue to grow GDP per capita for countries, whether they're developed or developing, to become more prosperous over time. And for that to happen, we actually need the machines working alongside human beings. And so that means we actually, in order for the economy to grow, we need to make sure that actually we de develop and adopt all of these technologies and make sure that people are working so that, in fact, the next generation will have better lives than we do. But other things that we might worry about, for certain, these technologies are going to displace human labor. They're going to start doing things that people used to do. And what's incredibly important, again, number one, for the individual workers, because you know, they need to be able to have meaningful work. But secondly, even for the overall macro economy, we need to be able to redeploy that labor. We talk about mass redeployment rather than mass re unemployment. And that's a tremendous challenge. How do we make sure that we find new things for people to do, be able to pay them to do it, and also retrain them so that they can do these new activities.